who goes there? I will defend myself if required. Oh. Yes, I am a witch of this wood. The witch, if you ignore that upstart taken to Mender's Pond. And I do not want to be interrupted by some human in the... Something's chasing you. Uh, calm down. I don't hear anything. Not beyond your gentle stumblings. Uh, have you been running? You're in quite a state gasping for air like this. Are you in a panic? Okay. It is important to know that you are safe with me, and I will not come any closer unless you ask. Is the light spell I cast too bright? There. I'll dim it so it does not compete with the moon. If it can be helpful, let's do what we can to ground your mind and bring you back to me, darling. Turn your head around this illuminated wood. No harm will come to you in my domain. Do you see the feathered wing of the owl overhead? Well, that's one. Tell me another thing you can see. Yes, the stone bridge that crosses the brook. I see it too. And another. Come now, this will help. Yes, the silvery white wild roses I've come to pick. They are lovely. They match a fourth thing, do they not? bright lady in the moon, swinging over our heads. Now give me a last thing. Yes, I'm here, standing next to you. Very good. Now four things, darling one, that you can hear. Try to listen for things very close to your ear, as well as those far away. Hmm. Yes, of course. The running water, the bird song, leaves rustling overhead, and you can hear my voice. Good. I am glad. You are focusing quite well, friend. If you feel comfortable taking a breath, you might do that now. Just focus back again on the sound of my voice. Here. Three things within reach that you can touch. That leather bracelet on your arm might be a start. Can you feel the ridges on your fingertips if you brush them together for just a few moments? Here. Feel the gentle surface of this wild rose petal. And the last, of course, is the taste. That is not so simple. You can eat a wild rose, I suppose, but here. Let me look what I have in my component bag. Here's a simple vial of water. Just water. Yes, double checking, just water. <laughs> Drink this down. Now, do you feel any better? Yes. Oh, excellent. There's nothing to be ashamed of. It's quite easy for the world to move more quickly than our spirits. Sometimes it is a little frightening as you come back into connection. Mind and body all at once. Mm. What am I? Mm. I am many things. 
I'm not teasing, I do not tease. For now, it is enough to say that I brew concoctions and potions and speak out the hidden fortunes written on the papyrus of one's palm. I do this for the coin of villagers and travelers with good sense. This is what you have sought me out for, is it not? So you do not seek a potion, or not exactly. You have just been running, unsure. Seeking aid. Well, I had not intended to be found, stranger, and indeed quite intended not to be. So it must be some grievous need that brought you to this corner of the darkened wood with only a torch and the villagers' questionable stories to guide you. Come, let me see your face, darling. Bring me your open palm, so that I may trust that you do not foolishly come to either do harm or fall to it. Oh, I see it as if you bore a blotted sun in the center of your chest. A true heartbreak. It scalds your very aura. Oh, dear one, I am sorry. Oh. Come, sit. If you care to remove any of that weighty armor so you can feel more at ease. I promise we will not leave it in the open air to rest. Hmm. Now, now do you see the wall I've made around us? This is a fairy's magic, of which I am familiar, but it hallows a patch of earth and hides it before all prying eyes, keeping out any rain or cold. It's a lovely little spell. <laughs> yes, yes, the land is soft here, and the singing clever brook is just at the edge of this dome, not far if you still thirst. It is true, I am a witch of this wood, so it is my business to know every north and south and east and west of this green bramble, and I know where it is safe to settle. There. <laughs> now, dear warrior, no beast, no mercenary, no wretched lover at your heels may reach you while the barrier is in place. Oh, oh of course. <laughs> Don't mistake me. Love isn't wretched, even when it ends. But the truth is the pain we must endure you'll put your trust in my mending. <laughs> your eyes are wide. While my purposes are my own, I do not feast on your sorrows, no matter what those old wives in the village say. Nor do I sip at your passions. Here, let me take this torch from you and make of it a magic flame that cannot burn us. I will set it beside us here. I would prefer not to converse in smoky shadows, and perhaps this will serve as another proof. I am, as I say. Even so, you wish to know more of me before you accept my magical aid. It is fair enough. I am a being less of time than of place. I linger near this village, tend to it. Perhaps I cannot leave it. I have never tried. Where do you come from? The city of glass. The perfumed city. The city of the Red River. The city of thorns by the north. Oh, dear one, I cannot see every detail of your life. But 
by the dark circles around your eyes, I might have guessed. There are stories told that the fairies ask a heavy price to hear, and only once did I sit amongst them and hear of their king and queen and the child that disappeared. Unable to discover the lost child's whereabouts, the queen used the magic to wrap the castle, the city's very walls, in implacable thorns. And so, I'm given to understand, it has remained. I would have asked the fairies more, but of this they would not speak. Over seven nights drew far from me, no matter the cakes and syrups I plied them with. The City of Thorns is a dark place. I am glad you left it. Yes, of course. The fairies would not lie about such things. It would bore them too much to try. Now, please, tell me your name. <laughs> Truly. Truly. Forgive me, how strange. No, no, no. Of course, you would be sure about your name. My price. <laughs> you are wise to recognize that there is always a price. But for you, it was paid long ago. If I can be of service this evening, it will be a boon done and a burden taken from me. You are well looked after in the realms of magic. Guardians who perhaps guided your steps to this hidden bale. Darling, listen to the water singing over the stones. Relax yourself and let the stars parade overhead. I will give you this. This, this is a crown of roses. So all spirits know that you're under my protection, including the dark power that has cursed you. This is no simple school-age heartbreak. I can see that clearly. Indeed, you are quite cursed. No, oh, are we not laughing, darling? <laughs> well, the work is serious. Laughter is always the first, truest step in any magic of how well it shakes loose fear. The magic is a trial, but it is also cleverly a metaphor. If you can endure an evening without giving in to its desire to see you suffer, we break the power of the curse. The memories of what was will remain, but you will no longer ache and burn so cruelly. You will remember who you are requires nothing else to be complete. Love adds flavor, adds light and joy to our days. But it is not bones and blood and a bed to rest upon. You are enough, just so, just as you are. Now lay still here in the cool grass while I find what is necessary. You are not alone. I'm here with you, dear. This is a selenite wand. Charged by the moonlight, it will help us write out your new fortune. Take a deep breath. Within this hallowed earth, you write out what will be. You will not forget this heartbreak, but you will forget its venom. You shatter any bonds on their heart or mind or will that they do not seek to hold them. Let this warrior be free of any beasts and ghosts and blood-minded hunters that chase them. Let their freedom guide their new way. You may not cast out the shadow entirely. But you will cast out its teeth. You will remember your own strength and your own purpose. There. Now breathe.
breathe in the magic, so the air within is the same as the air without. Slowly. Mm. Oh, lovely one. Now, if you sleep, you sleep safely here. The bandits that chase you will have lost the trail when the sun rises. Sends the dear lady above to her own rest. If you'd care to run further, Perhaps down the path into the village and find the lumpy beds of its one and only inn. Such is your prerogative. I wish you only well. Mm -hmm. Wish to hear a story about me. Or find me again, traveler, when the moon shines brightly as it does this night. And perhaps there will be another story to tell.